Colossal is a dude that's almost never used competitively in Gen 9. He's got nice bulk with base 110 HP and 120 defense, but offensively, this lump of coal basically does nothing. But it does have a unique ability called Steam Engine that maximizes your speed to plus 6 if you're hit by a fire or a water move. Terra Water can allow it to take a predicted water attack that normally melts us, and now this thing is absolutely zooming. Meteor Beam is a 120 power rock move that raises special attack by one stage on turn 1 and then hits on turn 2. We give Colossal the Power Herb to allow this to fire immediately, and now we've got some crazy offense to go with our speed. It's got Flamethrower for stab damage, along with Scald for unique coverage, and Colossal can get out of hand pretty quick. Alright, so look, for a while now, I've been wanting to mess around with Colossal, mostly just because this dude still has Scald, which is kind of a hot commodity these days. But also, in my suggestions channel on the Discord, Dirty Mike minus the boys came at us with some heat, and today we are going to show the true power of our Colossal friend. Hey, if you're into making generally bad Pokemon kinda good, you should probably hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the battle. Alright, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Cyclozar. This thing is a freaking motorcycle dragon, it's here to party, and he's here to chop his own tail off. Or at least, I imagine they probably go for a shed tail, that's kinda just what this fella does. Um, I do wanna prioritize getting up the Stealth Rock, however, for a couple different reasons, but it turns out... They actually just go straight for the U-turn, try to grab a better matchup here, and I'm just trying to focus on these hazards, because it's going to punish switch-ins like the Kilowattril, things like the Skeledurge, but also it's actually going to break the Sturdy on the Donphan, if I want to grab a one-hit KO, potentially with Colossal later, but currently we've got ourselves a Giraffe to deal with. So first of all, I don't really know what this thing wants to do, I've seen lately people running kind of Trick Room sets with this, it can be kind of scary, blocks priority, and just does some shenanigans, turns out this thing actually has energy ball, and that is absolutely going to obliterate my Swampert, who is in fact allergic to grass, and also takes the balls right to the face. So, uh, with that, I now have a revenge switch in, and obviously Scizor is kind of a good switch in here, it kind of it threatens with the prospect of like a Swords Dance, and also of course U-Turn is just going to do a whole lot. I figure U-Turn is kind of my best bet here, just because I can get some huge damage and cover for a potential switch, but they actually stay in here, which is uh, unfortunate because they do live. However, I have myself an idea. Call it a Jimmy Neutron Brain Blast out here. I'm actually going to end up switching directly into Noivern because this thing comes in and as I take an attack here, it's actually going to activate my eject button because my goal is to get the Colossal in here for free. So the button gets pressed, Noivern's like, see ya, and now I can bring in the Colossal. His fat ass comes in without having to take any damage, which is nice because with the Colossal here, we're trying to obviously bait a, uh, a Greninja switch in. So what I'm going to do here is just go for the Meteor Beam. They do stay in and just go for the Psychic. Uh, do in fact outspeed me because I am quite slow at the moment. And also, they get the special defense drop, which generally isn't that big of a deal. But this does allow me to go for the Meteor Beam. So I get the special attack boost, which is exactly what we're looking for. And also with that Power Herb, I can get the attack off right away, of course. Uh, the giraffe in the hoodie is not going to be living that with the red health, but uh, I mainly wanted to go for that just to get that special attack boost because we're going to need all the offensive help that we can get. And on the revenge, they actually do bring in the Greninja. So this is exactly what we're looking for at this point because we do want this thing to go for a water move. So at this point, I can commit the Water Terra and we are about to go full Water Bender on that ass. Going for the Water Terra allows me to guarantee that I live a water attack and more importantly, is gonna get real hot and steamy. So we look ridiculous with the water coming out of our coals that were once on fire, um, but they do actually play right into it. They go for the liquidation here, gonna transform even into even more of a water type. Uh, but of course we take that nicely. And now it is time. We get the drastic speed boost. Talking about a plus six speed boost now makes us faster than everything they have. And I go for the Meteor Beam here because knowing that they were going to be faster initially, uh, hitting me with the liquidation now makes me faster on this next turn. So it's basically like I get to fire off that Meteor Beam immediately. Uh, they do get an option to switch. However, they stay in and uh, we summon the power of a freaking Meteor and just blast his ass. And that is definitely going to take care of it because now we also have plus two special attack and plus six speed. So we are in the exact spot we're looking to be as now they decide to go into the Kilowattril. So of course, I am threatened by Electric at this point and while Kilowattril is extremely fast, plus six Colossal gets up to 204 speed here where a timid Kilowattril 
with max speed is only at 194. So we're built to outspeed that thing and we can finish it off with that power gem. So that is amazing. Now they decide to go into the Cyclozar. The only way this thing outspeeds me is if it's Scarf, which it potentially could be. However, we do just outspeed Power Gem is ass, and that does take care of the Cyclozar. So it's actually really fun seeing uh, big, big Boy over here outrunning some pretty fast threats. But now they decide, hey, Don Fan's the kind of guy who can take a Power Gem, potentially. Psych, bitch, I have the Scald. I can go for the hot water. No sturdy for you. <laughs> that is going to take care of it. And also, they are, in fact, not going to be having any of that nonsense as they do just straight up bail. The Scald is unexpected, and we are here for it. But you already know I have a second match here for you because this thing is extremely satisfying to try to get it to work. And it's just an all-around good time. So what's actually interesting about this set is it's a whole lot easier to get Steam Engine to activate upon switching into a fire move. But a lot of the time, you do need to go for that Terra Water uh, on the super effective water hits to try to at least get it to get going. So in this matchup here, it looks like the Samurott is going to be our best kind of uh, option for that. And let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Hungry Hippo. And I decided to lead off with Zapdos as we got a little bit of a team switch up here. And this is here to kind of get a Volt Switch action. However, of course, I'm not going to want to deal with the Sand Farting Hippo here as it does set up that Sand Stream. So at this point, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go right into the Executor. Because it's more than likely they just go right for the Stealth Rock turn one here. I can bring in the Executor. And this thing is kind of built to be able to access some pivots for the rest of the team. It has the Eject Pack to be able to drop a Draco Meteor or a Leaf Storm and then immediately hard switch. So it kind of is a good mon to be able to get positions. But they actually end up switching out themselves. And they're going to go into the Glamora. So it's kind of like, hey, didn't... Uh, didn't plan on seeing you here. Long Neck is now in much more danger than I was against the Hippo. But now I figure it's more than likely they go right for the Stealth Rock here. They probably expect me to switch here. The Sludge Bomb kind of be obvious. Uh, but they actually end up going for the Mortal Spin. Kind of a good mid-ground play as it does cover for a switch. Poisons anything guaranteed. Uh, but luckily, I am at least able to drop my Draco Meteor here. Not only potentially break the Focus Sash, but do a huge amount of damage. And... Oh, Long Neck is actually like, hey, I'm actually late for a meeting. I'm going to bail. So I get that eject pack, and now I get a nice little switch into whatever I would like here. So I'm thinking, you know what? I might actually just go Colossal. While I am threatened by something like an Earth Power here, I generally feel like this wants to set up some hazards. That's kind of what this weird flower is here to do, set up the Stealth Rock. So I'm going to go straight for the Meteor Beam, and it does pay off because they do straight up go for that Stealth Rock. And one way that you can try to get Steam Engine to activate is by making Colossal seem like it's an eminent threat. So the way we do that is I can go for the Meteor Beam here, grab the special attack boost, activate the Power Herb, get it off immediately. And with that chip we did get on the Glamora, that's definitely going to take care of it. So that thing is out of the way and Colossal is putting himself on a silver platter being like, hey, someone please come and throw some water on me. As they do end up going exactly into what we're looking for, the Samurott comes in and... This thing is looking tiny over there, by the way. Gotta hit the gym, buddy. But this is gonna allow me to go for that Terra Water. And it is kind of in my best interest just to go for another Meteor Beam. Because we can truly never have too much damn special attack out here. So, we're gonna bring out the Fountain. And this set is always a little bit of a gamble. A lot of the time people will expect the Steam Engine. But uh, in this situation here, it's just really kind of like their best option is to try to neutralize the threat of Colossal here. And a Ceaseless Edge won't do it. So, they do in fact go for the Razor Shell. We are able to obviously take it nicely. Does in fact drop the defenses, but... The steam engine is absolutely roaring out here. I can now go for a meteor beam, and since I did use my power herb, of course, we do have to charge up. But now at plus six speed, we are in fact faster than everything barring potential choice scarfs, and something is going to have to switch in here and take a meteor beam unless they want to stay in. So they do in fact stay in, we connect on the meteor beam, which is amazing, and at plus two, that is going to be enough to take care of the Samurott. So we are absolutely rolling. Once again, we are in the position we need for Colossal to thrive. Unfortunately, though, we now do get hit by Sandstorm, losing our rock type. And I do kind of need all the health that I can get because there is some threats that can stop Colossal here. But first, they actually decide to go into the Crocodile. As Crocodile comes in, they're probably not straight up expecting the Scald. I can go for the Terra Boosted plus two special attack. 
uh, Skull here is going to be able to take care of the Crocodile. And uh, I feel like just not a lot of people uh, do see that coming. So we're able to capitalize there, take care of the Crocodile, and we are absolutely rolling here. So one of the things that we are worried about that can stop Colossal here is going to be this damn fake-ass Pikachu. Because this thing has to take an attack before I can knock it out. And now it kind of comes down to if I have enough health to be able to take two attacks from this. So I just decided to go for the Scald here. Just need to break that disguise uh, luckily, we are able to snap the Pikachu's neck, takes care of it, and uh, it is going to allow them to go right for a Shadow Claw. Well, it's good that they're not able to set up a Swords Dance or something like that. The Shadow Claw is going to do a nice little chunk of damage, probably mostly because we got that minus one defense from the Razor Shell, which is unfortunate because now with the amount of health that I have left it's kind of a gamble and if I'm gonna be able to live a shadow sneak sadly we are not and the priority is gonna be able to take care of Colossal there um, and uh, I'm pretty confident that if we did not get that defense drop we actually would have been in a, a great spot here to sweep the rest of the game but now we've got our work cut out for us while we did take care of some threats we now have to uh, figure out a way around and luckily at least we were able to get rid of the disguise so the Mimikyu isn't as big of a problem, but what I can do here is be like, hey, I know that your head is nearly falling off, but also, hear me out here, what if I turned it into a pancake with a goddamn hammer? I'm gonna just straight up go into the Tinkaton here, as uh, I know that I can take a Shadow Claw for sure. Our hammer be thick as hell, and we take it nicely. This now allows us to go for that Gigaton, and luckily it is gonna finish off the Mimikyu. So with that thing gone, we are in a pretty decent spot, but again, there is some large threats over here, mainly things like the... Houndstone, who does benefit from Sandstorm being up. So, gotta try to see if I can have a workaround here, as they're gonna go right back into that Hippo, most likely just to set up that Sandstorm. And also, it's just a defensive fat boy who definitely takes attacks, especially from Tinkaton when I can't click the Gigaton Hammer twice in a row. So, I just decided to go for the knockoff. We saw the Smooth Rock earlier from the Frisk, and we are going to definitely punt that shit a million miles away, as uh, they do go for the Earthquake here. It finishes off the Tinkaton, but at this point, Tinkaton kind of did what it needed to do in neutralizing the Mimikyu, at least. As uh, Now I can go into whatever I like. So we have Executor still at full, and it's kind of just my best bet here, knowing that I can take any attack from a Hippo here, and as long as we don't miss our damn Leaf Storm, we should be in a pretty good spot. Their remaining Pokemon is going to be uh, that Houndstone, who does have access to the ability uh, Sand Rush, so it doubles its speed, and also it has some very scary tech. So I'm able to take a Body Press nicely, allows me to then throw some leaves at him, cut his ass up, and we're having Hippo for dinner. But now it is time to see basically what they have in store uh, for their final sweeper. Now, Houndstone is a crazy ass Pokemon for a couple different reasons. Obviously it's ability, but most of all, it gets access to the move Last Respects. That is a 50 power ghost move that gets plus 50 power for each time a party member is fainted, which I've killed five of them, so I am in danger of uh, turning out to be as dead as this dog is, and uh, they are actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra here. So, with this thing Sand Rush, it is going to be super quick, and uh, I am scared. It goes for the Terra Ghost, make this thing even more spooky, and for sure is going to go for that last respects and finish me off. So, it's time to pay my respects to the Executor, because this thing absolutely gets sent to the damn Shadow Realm with that last respects, um, and down we go. So. The one good thing about this is that a lot of the time Houndstone is going to be either like a choice band set, a choice scarf set, a lot of the time it's going to be choice. So what I'm banking on is the fact that they now are locked into that and actually cannot hit slacking. And even if they aren't locked in, uh, it's more than likely that uh, I can live any other attack that they can throw at me. So I decide to go for the knockoff here. Turns out they are locked into that last respects. Does not affect me because slacking doesn't give a shit. He's sleepy over here. And I can finish it with that knockoff, which is actually going to be enough to do it because slacking is a damn monster. And we're also going to be able to uh, knock off the choice scarf that it was holding. So it turns out that thing was quick as hell. And without a normal type, I was in extreme danger. But that's going to be the end of the match. And uh, that was a super fun one. Very cool seeing Sandstorm teams like that. It's not that often that you see that kind of, you know, kind of stuff running around. But today we were able to show that Colossal is in fact still a massive threat. And it's also pretty fun to use. Listen, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video. It really does support the channel. And uh, I will catch you next time. Peace out.